والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله and welcome to this episode of Beauties of Islam I'm Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I would like to really talk about one of if not the very most important of all the aspects of all the facets of all the beauties of Islam Allah who is Allah where is Allah and can we prove it what is the proof and in this episode that's one of the aspects I want to talk about the proof of Allah and I recall that when I was first introduced to Islam the person that I was talking to was a Muslim of course and I was trying to call him to my religion in Christianity he was telling me of some of the aspects of Islam what you must do what the requirements are what the beliefs are and he saw that I was also concerned about my beliefs as a Christian at that time and so he said to me Islam teaches us to always go to what is better whatever you have that's better you should always move toward that so i'm ready as a matter of fact to go to your religion of christianity if it's better than my religion of islam and i thought to myself hey i got this guy this is going to be easy because he's been telling me about the pillars of islam which require that you must establish something called salah and pray five times a day you must fast the months of ramadan 30 days non stop no food no drink during the daytime and then you have to do something called hajj and you have to go all the way to mecca and you have to do a pilgrimage dressed in two towels and so and so and so many things you know and i'm thinking mm. And plus what you can't do, you can't drink alcohol, you can't eat pork, you can't uh, have a girlfriend, you can't sit around, you know, wasting time listening to music, crazy stuff. So as far as I was concerned, I had a better religion than he did. And I was beginning to explain that to him. And then he said, listen again. He said, I will go to your religion if it's better than my religion. But you have to have proof. <clears throat> now I thought about this for a minute. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> proof? What are you talking about? Proof. Religion is not about proof. As a matter of fact, religion is about faith. He said in Islam, you see, we do have faith, of course, but we have proof to back it up. We can prove everything in Islam. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you going to tell me, and this is what I said to him, you're going to sit there and tell me, as a Muslim, you can prove there's God? Then he said to me, you mean to sit there and tell me, as a preacher for Christianity, that you can't? Ugh. I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> well, there is no proof God exists. He said, really? I said, no. He said, so now, does your religion teach you to go what is better? I said, well, yeah, well of course, you know, we would go to whatever is best. He said, what about proof? If you see proof, do you go to the proof? Or do you hold on to concepts that you have had, you know, passed on for generations, things that other people say without proof? Do you go to what is testable evidence? Yeah. I said, well, explain what you have. He said, in Islam, we can prove God exists without a doubt, number one. Number two, we have the proof of what our purpose is in life. And number three, we can know without a doubt how to do what it is God wants us to do, how to do God's will on earth. Well, that statement alone was enough to get me thinking because that is a teaching from the New Testament of the Bible. It's a prayer, actually, called the Lord's Prayer that Christians pray all the time asking for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right, tell me more, I say. Tell me, I'd like to know. He said, okay, first of all, we as Muslims totally accept that God exists without any doubt. But it's not just because somebody said so. Not just because scripture says so. But because we have testable evidence that we can use our minds, our occult, our thinking, our logic to conclude that in fact God does exist. And he exists according to the way that it's explained in the Quran, his speech to us. 
And I'm going, okay, give me an example. He said, well, first of all, when you think about the heavens, look to the heavens, what do you see? I said, well, the sun. He said, what about at night? I said, well, maybe the moon, of course, the stars, unless it's cloudy. He said, so sun, moon, clouds. Yeah. He said, and what are they like? I said, what do you mean? He said, what are they shaped like? I said, they're round balls. And what do they do? Well, what do you mean, what do they do? He said, describe the motion. I said, well, these are circles or balls or spheres that are going in orbits, elliptical orbits, within orbits, and they're all moving together as a mass, and they're turning, winding. This is what they're doing. He said, when was this known to human beings? I said, what do you mean? I guess always. No, not true. Actually, what we understand today about astronomy, what we understand today about the universe, has only really come out in the last hundred years or so. A lot of it developed in the last 500 years, the basis for what we know today, but the proofs and evidences, even of the content of the moon, what it's made up of, how it moves, and so on, has only really been known in the last hundred years or so. And as far as ever going out of the Earth's atmosphere, this has only been in the last 50 years or so that even as discussed as a serious topic. Well, okay, so, he said, but yet 1,400 years ago, this is something that we have in the Quran. I said, what? And that's when he began to open the Quran and show me some of the amazing statements that are made about the creation itself. And there are so many. And in our program here, the beauties of Islam. We've discussed a lot of those. But in this episode, I just want to focus on who is the law and what is the proof. The first and foremost proof is that we all exist. You exist, I exist. How did we get here? How did our intelligence come to us? How is it that we're able to reason? How is it that we're able, as human beings, to interact with each other? How does that come about? Where does it come from? And if you said this is just a hodgepodge of accidents taking place, something without any order to it, then you haven't really understood how the universe works. Because when you look to the structure of the universe, when you look to the way that it's created, the way it all cooperates together from the macro of the, the planets and stars and suns and from the micro, which is the molecules, everything turning and working together, all of this is what. This is amazing cooperation. And how does it come about? So we're going to continue this just in a second. I want you to think about what I just said. We'll be right back after this. And you're watching The Beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your evil. Khayrukum. من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life Would we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation and we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you're back, we're back, and you're watching the beauties of Islam. What we've been talking about is the proof that God Almighty exists. One of the most important things about the belief in Allah is that it's not according to how you and I want to perceive God, but rather how He really exists, and that can only be known if He Himself informs us of who He is. Because if you sit there and try to make up something about how he is, and I make up something else, another person makes up something else, well, if you've got six billion people, we'll have six billion different opinions of who God is or who he isn't.
In fact, many people just accept that, well, God is to you whatever you want him to be. But that's such an illogical statement that it really means that it's not about God anymore. It's just about people's feelings, their own emotions and people's thoughts and their own logic. But it doesn't really mean that it comes from him. Could you imagine that somebody say to you, well, your professor of your particular course in the university, he is wh whoever you think he is. He's whatever you think he is. Does that make any sense? Or if somebody said your parents are whoever you think they are. <laughs> That's too much. My parents are whoever. Well, I, I think my parents are rich then. I think my parents are, you know, really wealthy. And I think my parents are going to give me a brand new car tomorrow morning. Oh, well, that's all well and great. But guess what? It's not true, is it? There's no evidence for this thing. You're just talking. You're just saying something without any proof. So we want to come back again to the subject that we were talking about earlier. What is the proof? The proof in Islam is the speech of Almighty Allah to us. And, of course, in our other programs, we've discussed at length, really, talking about this amazing thing called the speech of Allah, Allah's recitation, His Qur'an. And in here, we have found so many times examples of things that could not have been known even a hundred years ago, much less 1,400 years ago. Fourteen centuries back, people did not know how the creation of the universe was. They didn't understand that it, in fact, was the earth going around the sun. And people didn't know that, in fact, the earth was even round. People didn't know that the moon was actually going around the earth. And they didn't know, certainly, they didn't know about the galaxies. They didn't know about the Milky Way. They didn't know about the constellations the way they really are. They only guessed because they did not have microscopes. They did not have rocket ships. They did not have the Hubble telescope. That's a real good one with that amazing set of uh, refractory and uh, the mirrors within it that expand the, to an, huge, huge pictures of what's out in the universe that you can see how things are really growing, actually, as they are created. Billions of light years. And... All of this that we know today, we take it for granted. You can go to NASA's website, for instance, and see these things that are so amazing that you and I would just sit there and go, ah, oh, look at that. Yet it's described in the Quran 1,400 years ago. But above that, and this is what I wanted to share with you today, something is so beautiful. There's a verse in the Quran. It's called Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur, or the chapter of light, is chapter 24. Many beautiful teachings in there, of course, but this particular one is verse 35. And it begins by saying, Allahu nuris samawati wal ard. He is, talking about Allah, is the nur, the light. Light of what? Of the heavens and of the earth. I love this so much. He's the light of the heavens and the earth. One of the things that we got out of this program today is that we found that Islam is proving there's a God by what? By your common sense and the Quran. We have so much more about this. I wish you would go to our website, beautiesofislam.com, and find out the rest about this subject, about Allah being the light of the heavens and the earth. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be upon you. Islam.